All right, so I've heard a lot of people talk about this lately, and I can completely sympathize, sympathize with them. Um, often when people select parts or whatever, you have this blue outline pop up, and I'm just gonna copy and paste a few here and move them around a bit. And when you want to C-frame these parts together, uh, especially with a, you know, the smallest scale, it can become very difficult to perfectly line these up with the blue line blocking that. It can be very difficult to see where everything is. Um, so obviously this isn't the perfect example, um, but you can kind of get the idea. These blue outlines can, can really block the creases if you're trying to be very uh, direct and specific with what you're um, C-framing. So um, I've heard a lot of people come up and say this, and just today I was on the forums and a friend of mine posted something, wasn't even to me, but I just saw it, and uh, completely gave me an idea. Uh, now, just to kind of give you guys, come up with where I got the idea from, you guys may remember a while back uh, when outlines came out, a lot of people wanted to turn them off, and this is before you had the button under lighting that you can turn them on and off with. Um, and the only way to do that was to do it as a client and uh, specifically change it in the render files, uh, like in the actual files that build up the studio in the game. Um, so I'd never thought of this before, but I imagined, hey, like there's got to be something that's rendering this blue box. So, you know, maybe we can find a way to disable that. Uh, never, surprisingly, never thought of it before, um, but it was very easy to find, and I disabled it, and works like a charm. Um, so I'm going to give you kind of a quick tutorial how to do it. It's very easy if you know what you're doing, but I'm assuming a lot of people don't, um, because this is going to involve not necessarily like a large amount of scripting stuff, but you're, you are going into files and stuff, and you're not even changing that much, but... Really, honestly, all this stuff's irrelevant. I'm just kind of rambling on. So what you want to do is, I'm going to close my, my places here first. What you're going to want to do is go into Studio and open the Plugins folder. Um, the reason I say this is because it's a heck of a lot easier to open the Plugins folder and just click this, which will get you to the area we need to go, as opposed to going in here, typing in uh, percent app data, percent. Uh, going back to app data, going to local. This is I'm just showing you don't have to do this. I'm just showing you the other way. And then you get to this uh, thing. So going into the plugins folder is much easier. Anyway, once you're in this folder, you're going to go to versions. Um, now these numbers are constantly changing, so don't use mine for reference. Um, what you are going to do is you're just going to click it open, and you're going to look for the one with the studio uh, EXEs in it. Uh, so one will just be like a few, yeah, like proxy DLLs, um, and then the other one will be the actual player, which is what you'd connect to in a game that you can't edit, like, so when you just go to the front page and click a game. Um, so we're looking at the studio, because obviously that's what we're going to be editing our selection boxes in. Um, next we're going to go to the shaders, uh, shaders.json. Uh, now what you're going to do here, and this is an important step, is copy this file because you are going to be making some changes to it and if you ever want to go back because this is not something that you can easily just turn on and off unfortunately um, or that I know of I tried making a plugin but it was more trouble than it was worth and this is a heck of a lot easier um, so got your sorry you're gonna copy this um, you're gonna need a text well you don't need a text editor I imagine you can open it with a like just a normal you know text or notepad like this, um, but I recommend that if you don't have it, even if you don't script, get Notepad++ or something along those lines. It's a text editor that can just quickly open like that. Um, so we've got our copied file. Just leave it on your desktop or store it in a safe place uh, that you're going to remember. And what you're going to do is you're going to open the shaders file that's underneath in the folder with a text editing thing, and you're going to get rid of this first line. You can just backspace all that, save it, close it. You still got this file. If you want to um, fix it, you can delete this one, copy and paste this back in, or cut and paste. Um, if you lose this file up here, you have to completely reinstall Robux, or else you'll have complete render issues. But when you reinstall the entire thing, then you're going to get a, you know, a, a fresh reboot. So you don't have to worry too much if you screw things up. So if something goes wrong, just 
you know, uh, go back to this folder or sorry, the local folder here and just delete the, the Roblox folder. And when you click edit or play, it'll re-download the whole thing. Right. So you want to restart your studio. Give it a sec. And you can obviously go to whatever you want, but because I'm not going to go to any place specifically, you can get anything, get a part. Um, I'm going to do this. This is selected right now. When I move it around, you can still see it's selected. Um, but when I just, or sorry, um, there we go. Some, sometimes it's a bit, you know, iffy. Um, so you might have to grab it a few different times. You can do it through the Explorer, that'll work. You can use the different uh, selection tools here. Um, and it'll disappear, so like you can lift it up. Um, I feel like it, it really changes based on distance, so if you're close to it, it'll go away. If you're far, it'll come back up. Um, that's partially because of the render settings. If I were to go back, there's you can see there's different ones. And to be honest, I didn't explore too deeply, but this kind of works in your favor, because if you're far away, you can say, hey, that's the one I've selected. And if you're close up, you can be like, okay, now I can now I can work with the actual, the actual C-framing aspect of it right here. So I can, you know, spin it and do whatever I want to do. Probably have two separate parts, and I can uh, perfectly see where they they line up now without that that blue dot. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, hope I helped you guys out, and um, thought this was a cool little trick that I just found out of or found found. I uh, can't speak today, so yeah, enjoy, and uh, bye.